Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the 80mm F86 Sabre plug and play from FMS. Before I get started, I need to let you know this video is sponsored by FMS who sent me this F86 for review. I'll have a link in the description if you'd like to pick one up for yourself, and it will be an affiliate link. So if you use my links, the channel will get a little bit of a kickback. With that out of the way, let's get into it. For a long time, I've been interested in flying an F-86 Sabre. It's one of those airframes that's just very popular in the modeling community. So I was really pleased when FMS offered this one up for review. Let's get into some specifications really quick. It's got a 48 inch wingspan and a 46 inch overall length. Flying weight is around 3,050 grams all up. The motor is a 3665 2000 kV spun by a 100 amp ESC. It requires eight 13 gram servos and three nine gram servos. They recommend a six channel radio because of flaps and gear. The CG is 180 to 190 millimeters aft of the leading edge, probably down there at the root of the wing against the fuselage. The EDF itself is 80 millimeters and it is a 12 blade setup, which is really cool. Those 12 blade ducted fans sound great. FMS recommends a six cell 4000 to 5500 milliamp hour battery with a minimum rating of 45 C, which seems about right. The approximate flying duration is about three minutes. We'll test that of course. FMS recommends a skill level of upper intermediate, so definitely not a beginner airplane. And they say the assembly time is 10 minutes. We'll find out about that as well. The wing loading is 95.3 grams per DM squared and the wing area is 32 DM squared. I like to leave these airplanes in the box to give you an idea of how they're packed. FMS does a really good job separating the EPO parts, which in shipping, if you don't do a good job packing, EPO is subject to getting scratched and dinged up a little bit. So FMS goes that extra mile to make sure there's good separation in the parts. And this F86 is no exception. With that out of the way, let's get it out of the box and take a look at what's inside. We'll start out taking a look at the manual. This is very typical for FMS, black and white paperback manual. And in terms of languages, you've got English, German, and French, and looks like Chinese. So pretty typical English, German, French, Chinese, those are the languages involved. And the manual is very normal for FMS. It's uh, very, very comprehensive in terms of what you need to do and set it up, shows you how to set up your transmitter if you need that kind of help. A Little bit of information about the ESC, how to install your ball links and how to install your battery and basically just how to assemble the plane. There's not a lot of detail on the assembly process because it just doesn't need it. It's, it's very simple to put these planes together. They make it very easy. That's the bottom line. So the manual is sufficient to do the job. In terms of decals, I thought this was kind of interesting. Notice they have the livery on there already and there are two liveries for this plane. This one is called the Huff and the other one that's on the box is called the Sky Blazers. That's the red, white, and blue scheme. So right there, the Air Force Sky Blazers. I kind of like them both. This one's the more classic, what I'm more familiar with seeing, but I like that Sky Blazer livery as well. They're both attractive. I do like the scheme on this one. And then in terms of the decal, so they did most of the work for you. You got all the stripes and the bars and stars on there, the tail number, that's all there. The little Huff Dragon is there, the pilot's name is there. So that part's all done. And then they give you a little extra detail on these decal sheets if you want to add it. It's, I don't think it's strictly necessary, but if you want to scale it up a little bit and add a little bit more detail, they give you the option to do that. So they take care of the heavy lifting for you and they let you add the little bits if you want. I think that's actually kind of cool. I'm all right with that. Uh, first up is the starboard wing and there you can see the leading edge and that looks very nice and straight. And again, graphics already installed. They've done the heavy lifting for you. They've got USAF right there and a nice bright yellow stripe out here on the tip. There is a nav light right there, so navigation lights on this plane. And then in terms of flaps, these are EPO hinge flaps, but the aileron has actually got a hardware hinge, which I'm really happy to see that. I think FMS is stepping up their game, putting a hardware hinge on the control surfaces. That's awesome. Two thumbs up for me on that one. I really appreciate seeing that, especially on a jet. They move a little faster. You pull a little bit more G's. It's nice to see that they have hardware hinges in there instead of an EPO hinge for the ailerons. I wish they would have done the same thing on the elevator. I wish they would have included some kind of hardware uh, extending hinge for the flap, but it is what it is. In terms of the landing gear, you've got a nice color matched uh, landing gear leg cover here, servo cover here, and then silver colored tape to hide the servo wires. And you can see there's a plastic mount point or hard point for the bombs that come with the, come with the airplane. 
And then on the wing root, you can see a quick servo connector and that will also take care of your landing gear and your nav lights when you assemble the plane. So really nice because all you have to do is slide it on, it latches into place and makes all your electrical connections there for you with a nine pin D shell type connector. Here's a look at the port wing. We'll just take a look at this one for build quality. I won't go through all the detail on this, but there's the port wing. Stars and bars out here on the end and then a nice bright yellow wing tip. So I'm sure that'll look fantastic in the sky. And here's a look at the bottom of the wing. We've got US Air Force right there on the bottom with a nice bright yellow stripe on the wing tip. And then I do like the way these ailerons are very free moving and again, the hardware hinge. So really nice, I think that's very cool. Next up, we'll take a look at the vertical stabilizer. So checkerboard pattern and let's see, hinge wise, yep, they're mechanical hinges again. So awesome, that's really cool. Again, two thumbs up. It's one of my beefs on EPO planes, especially 3D style or fast move or anything with any kind of load. I'm really glad that they're putting those mechanical hinges in. That's awesome. And then a couple of hard points right there to mount the vertical stabilizer to the fuselage. And you can see the wire there for the rudder already installed. So servos already installed, covered up very nice. You just put your control rod on there and you'll be ready to go. There's the horizontal stabilizer and same deal, mechanical hinges on the back. So free movement there. There is no torque tube, which I'm also really happy to see. So it looks like they're gonna use independent servos. Yep, they do. Two servos on the back and connections to the control horns. So I like that far better than the torque tube. I think that's a good design. So far, I like what I see on this jet. It seems like they're checking all the right boxes. They're using quick connectors for the electronics. They've got mechanical hinges, simple assembly. They've done most of the work for you. The graphics are installed. So yeah, it's looking very promising so far. This model does come with a couple of EPO bombs. So if you wanna attach those and give it more of an appearance, I'll fly with them the first time just to check it out. But normally I do take this kind of thing off the plane just because all they really do for RC purposes is add weight and drag. Now they're not that heavy and it does look cool, but you know, for regular day-to-day -day flying, I probably would take these off, but they have them there in case you wanna use them, which is fine. Next, we'll take a look at the fuselage, which actually comes in two parts. There's the forward part and there's a tail section, which assembles onto the fuselage. Very simple, two fiberglass tubes and then a couple of screws, one at 12, three, six, and nine o'clock. So four screws and that's attached. And then of course, you're wiring right there for the lights. Those are the nav lights on the back right there. See that? A couple of little lights right over, right over the exhaust outlet. So very nice. Looks cool, very simple to assemble. And there's the capture point for the stabilizers. So the vertical and horizontal stabilizers will attach right in this area. I think FMS did a really neat thing with the canopy release mechanism. Normally you see some kind of pin on the side or on the top or a latch but here they just put in a little button. It's almost very hard to find. When I first looked at it, I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. It's hidden, very camouflaged. So you press on that little button and then the canopy will pop off. And there is a little plastic latch right there on the back, which makes sure it stays on the airplane while you're flying. And then the other thing that wasn't lost on me on this plane is check out the detail in that cockpit. I mean, they have a uniform that actually looks like a uniform. The helmet is painted gray, the visor is black, the headrest is red. The, even the hardware deck here in the back, it's, I don't know if the light's gonna let me get a good look on it, but it's very weathered looking. So this looks really good. They really went the extra mile working on the detail on this cockpit. You gotta give FMS props for that. I mean, even the dashboard, I'm not sure if the camera's gonna get all the little decals, but even the dashboard looks pretty cool. It looks like it's got some really cool avionics type gauges in there. So this is probably one of the best detail cockpits I think I've ever seen on a plug and play model. Very, very nicely done. Good job, FMS. And of course, beneath the canopy, this is where all the hardware goes. Battery right here. The loops are already installed to attach the battery to the deck. And then all your wiring is laid out and ready for you to connect to your receiver. There's a distribution board right here for the elevator and rudder. This is normally really easy to set up. You just plug a couple wires into your receiver and you're good to go. I do wanna point out that they use an EC style connector. So if you're like me and you use XT style connectors, you'll need to change that out or put an adapter in. I prefer to change those out. I'll cut that loose and put an XT90 on there. But in terms of the equipment deck, everything's laid out for you. I don't see any issues there. And again, same thing with the graphics. You know, graphics are already taken care of for you. Here's a look at the port side of the fuselage. Looks really nice. Looks kind of detailed, man. This is actually a pretty sharp looking plane. I'm impressed, I like it. I like it. Looks good. And then here's the quick connector for the wings. And that again, takes care of your landing gear, nav lights, ailerons, flaps, all of that, all in one shot. 
And you can see right here is the landing gear bay door. So that has a sequencer. So when you put the gear down, the doors will open. Uh, very nice, very nice scale effect if you're into that kind of thing. And then they have for shipping a little strap to hold those doors and keep them in place so they don't move. The nose wheel has a door cover as well. Very clean profile. I mean, that is very smooth up against the fuselage. Very clean, minimal drag. It looks like a couple light covers, but I don't see any bulbs in there. I'm not sure if those are gonna light up or not. It looks like they're supposed to, but I do see it. there's like a little clear cover there. We'll have to figure that out when we fly it. Up front, you've got the machine gun bays and then the big intake on the F-86. And then on the bottom, we've got intake as well for the EDF. We've got a vent here and a vent here. And of course the EDF is accessible right here under these screws. So easy access to the motor and EDF unit if you need to get in there. And I think that's about it. The bottom of the fuselage looks very good. And the last piece of hardware is the wing spar tube. So that slides in right here. And when you attach the wings, there are three hard point connections. There's one right here just after the landing gear door cover. And then there's one right here, right under the spar tube and one right here in front of the quick connector. So it looks like three screws to hold that wing on, which means it'll disassemble quickly for transport. Well, that wraps up my first look at the FMS 80 millimeter F86 Sabre. And I gotta tell you, I like what I see so far. I think the graphics are really well done. That cockpit is amazing. I've never seen detail like that on a plug and play cockpit before. Very, very nicely done. I love the fact that they're using hardware hinges on the control surfaces. I think that little hidden plunger to release the canopy is spectacular. On the landing gear, they did a nice job putting that nose gear cover in there and making it very flush to the bottom. So very nice job there. And the main gear also have covers over the landing gear legs and the doors themselves. So I think they've just done a really nice job putting this together. They paid attention to details and that's what we like to see. Nice panel lines, rivets are all over the place. The graphics are pre-installed. It just looks really good. Obviously the next thing to do is take care of the flying. So I'll get it put together and over to the field, hopefully tomorrow. So keep an eye on the channel for the maiden video. I'll get that posted just as soon as I can. Thanks to FMS for sending this F86 out for review. If you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe smash that thumbs up button and hit the notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. YouTube should recommend another video for you right now. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and go fly something.